I think this is a very, very important point for me because I'm really, I'm really not satisfied with the current solution. I really think it sucks. I mean, I have all my documents at my desktop at home at the moment, somewhere in my home directory, right? But now I'm in San Francisco with my notebook. So how do I access my data? Sometimes I copy stuff around. Sometimes I hope that I have internet access and I can, can mount it uh, somehow because I know how SSH works. And it's not versioned, it's not backupped. It's, it's really the same situation as 20 years ago. And um, we did some brainstorming together with some friends from KDE and this took several months. And I have a wish list now from stuff I want to have for storing my data. The first wish is all data under my control. I don't want to use something like Dropbox or whatever. I want to be in, I want to be in control but my data. This is very important to me, the most important thing. Um, but I still want to access everything from every device. I want to access all my data, uh, data from my home desktop, of course. Also want to access it from, uh, from my work desktop, which probably doesn't run KDE, just Linux or Windows or um, Mac or whatever. Um, I also want to access it from my laptop. This means in an offline way. Then from my netbook, which is, has limited storage, for example, from a random internet cafe, I want to access all my data, and also from my smartphone, of course. That's all you want? No. <laughs> <laughs> I want more. <laughs> yeah. Also, online and offline support, very important, I think. Sometimes I don't have a fast internet connection to my, to my personal cloud or whatever, and I want to synchronize this somehow. Just if I'm online, I can sync my data, and if I'm offline, I can work on my local version. Then automatically backup. I mean, I have my own script for years now with an, just an improved rsync, basically. But I, my normal users, that don't backup at all. It would be nice if this storage solution could backup the data automatically somehow. And versioning, of course, I mean, this is really crazy. I mean, there are companies who are selling um, servers like, like Novell, <laughs> for example, or even uh, Microsoft, and they don't even have proper versioning support in it. So we can't go back to the last, last week's version of my open office document, for example. I want to, want to have versioning support. Encryption, of course. Easy sharing this is probably one of the most important things. I want to click on one of my files and say, well, this special file, please share with Alexandra, just to get your attention again. <laughs> 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 Or this special, uh, this special folder together with my KDE friends to work together on this document. And this is just sharing of data is so difficult. This is just, this is so difficult. People are mailing it around and, and this is horrible. Yeah, it's painful. What? It's painful. Yeah, great. Good morning. <laughs> okay, next is easy extent um, of storage. This is also a very interesting point. I mean, some, you're collecting all, more data all the time, more MP3s, more movies, more whatever, and it's growing and growing, and someday your hard disk is full. So what do you do? I mean, most people, they probably buy a bigger hard disk and install everything, complete operating system again, or, or removing data or whatever. This is really not good. It should be easy to say, well, I have this st a second device and this, this third server, so, server or whatever, and please, use this also to, for storing my data. So examples, what does this really mean in day-to-day in, in -day life? For example, I'm working on my thesis, right? I want to access this document from everywhere, from all devices, if I'm here in San Diego or in Germany, on my phone or whatever, I want to work on this all the time. But I don't, don't want to copy it around with USB, USB devices, and this just sucks because I, you lose them and they, they break, and this is not the best solution. Completely secure, still very important, and I want to have all my data versioned and backup, because, I mean, this is a lot of work. I don't want to lose the data. Next example is, I want my music accessible from everywhere. Um, even if it's too big to fit on my, on my, on my netbook, 
I, uh, sometimes I copy some folders around, but this is just this is not this is not the best solution. And I want to share part of my music with a friend. So say, well, this folder or this artist or whatever, share this with this friend. Read only or read write or whatever. Next is we do a KDE developer sprint, and we're working on some documents. Yours, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a use case where we use Google Docs now often, yeah. right? Wouldn't it be nice to have some, some solution where in a small group share some folder and work together on some, some files, easy to set up without setting, having a server or whatever infrastructure, just say, well, I have here my, my personal cloud and share this folder with my friends. Next example is um, my parents. For example, I want to look at my holiday pictures and say, well, just this special folder, read-only access to these people. So, and all this stuff, I mean, this is really not rocket science. This is really, I mean, we are in 2010, right? And it's still so difficult. It's just basically copy stuff around again. This is, this is not, this is not a future. And I think we need a solution for this. And this is actually not that difficult. I thought a bit and discussed this with. Okay. <laughs> if you have a question, okay. I think this is not that difficult to implement. And I want to announce a project now called Own Cloud now which is a solution for your personal cloud to store your data. So the idea is to have this, first of all, HGPL, of course. So this is uh, freely available for everybody. Um, you can install it on your own root server. Alexandra is the answer to your question earlier. You can install it on your own server, if you have an own server, or you install it on your home PC, and, or on your company server. Or if you don't want to care about installation of strange software at all, just rent it from a, from a company who provides this as a service. But this is still better than store all my files at, at a Google service. And access, of course, via a browser. Yeah? So this still sounds like a lot of manual work, right? I mean, if, even if I had a root server somewhere, yes. I would need to maintain it. Sorry. Well, there are people who have a server and they just do apt-get install own cloud in the future and they're done. It's still too much for a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure. This is, this is for us. This is for geeks. Sure. Yeah, this is for, this is for us, right? The yeah. last option is what you would use. Yeah. Most people would use it. No. Well, yes, but we are currently not having a company that provides the service to where I could rent that. I think yeah. <laughs> this is. Yeah, I think my first slide was this is a vision for the next five years. I see. Right. So I should provide that service and pay people who work on it and then rent it out and You could if you want or not. Yeah. I see. Or just ask a friend and say, well, can I also use your, your cloud? Give me some folder where I could put my stuff in if you trust this person. They're different. I mean, if, if, it's a own, if it's free software, there are lots of options. OK, we can access this via a browser. And we also want to have an interface for PC and for smartphones. And um, I think WebDAV is an interesting solution for this. So you can mount this, this, this your own cloud. I mean, WebDAV is nice because it's um, implemented, it's already available in Mac, Windows, Linux, and even via Kio slaves in KDE. So this is really click on the, on the WebDAV link and you're done. Um, yeah, like I said, it's also very well supported. Um, syncing, of course. Syncing is also not that difficult. The idea is to have a small application on your desktop it mounts, for example, your, your cloud in a, a hidden directory and just compares timestamps or with some other metrics, some improved rsync, and copies stuff around. Yeah? Uh, 
Hey Frank, I'm Matt with the uh, FreeBSD project. Uh, I think this is a great idea. Do you already have any client-side applications for KDE or, or any OS? No, no, this is just a this presentation okay. of, I, this is, okay, so. the, the next slide is, is probably we have to do this together. Okay. So we just, I mean, we're a server company up in San Jose that's you know, very invested in, in uh, using KDE and spreading KDE yes. and FreeBSD. And, uh, and so we all run PCBSD <coughs> and desktop, so we were just talking about great. That. And I think uh, Alexandra just, just said, you know, hey, what about regular people that want to use this? And so I think what we'll do is probably throw a few servers up, maybe set up an infrastructure for this, and just leave it open for people to, to use. Maybe Chris will write a PCBSD client. For <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is this is great. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is fantastic. I mean, at the moment, this is just some present some ideas. I played around with it. I can show you something later, which is really not that difficult. The basic stuff, like we can do this in a few weeks because the building blocks are already available. But this is great. This is still nothing is finished. Okay. <laughs> okay. So backup, we can just hook in into the into the WebDAV server and implement some the, the safe functionality to just copy this to a second device or, uh, or a second server. This is also very easy. Versioning, we can use um, something like subversion, uh, git or hard links as, a, as, as backup. Just have to hook it into the, 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 the create, save, uh, delete, uh, whatever functionality of the web stuff, stuff and hook this together with the existing solutions. This is also no rocket science. Encryption, we can use GPG, of course, to encrypt some files. We will use SSL for the WebDAV communication and for the web interface, so it's secure. Sharing is also easy. You can click on a file. You can use this in the web interface, and it just sends a, a WebDAV link to the person with some ID in it. And with the ID, you can store something like how long is this available and who is this person or whatever. You can do proper um, user management later. Um, and the people, this person clicks on the link and it um, does a, connects to the web, WebDAV server. This works with all operating systems and you have access to this, to this mount point, basically. So this is... Just a quick thing. Um, uh, the GNU PG project just started adding support for um, basically file system encryption, which means you can use the same keys you use for email also for file system. Which cool, perfect. That's a big problem because we have the key management aspect, yes. which is difficult. Yeah, so and the idea was, the idea with the GPG was f to encrypt from my own on the server. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, keys are always a problem with GPG because uh, it's complex, yeah. And yeah, you can say with the sharing, this is only, this is read access or read write access. So this is also easy to implement on the server. And um, so for example, a link can expire after some time. Um, you can share only a file or even a directory. We can have notifications. So for example, we can use the social desktop functionality here to send notification if somebody shares something with you or if somebody is editing or creating something on your, on your server, in your, in your folder, or if the storage is full, for example, you can get a notification. Um, and the timeline for this, I think we can do a version 1.0 really fast. This means just, I mean, there are free web interfaces for file management available already. And there are free WebDAV server implementations already available. Just hook this together and make it a nice package, make some um, example Apache configuration and we're basically done for the first version. So this is really accessible, I will work on this. Um, in I think two months something, we can have something like a version 1.0. And um, then with the version 2.0, we I would like to add something like versioning support and automatically backups and encryption. And this is also not that difficult. You can, I think six months is plenty of time for this. And then the next version could be sharing support, share some folders and jump files with people, um, syncing, and think end of, end of this year is, is also possible. I think, first of all, you, you probably think, well, this is complex, right? But if you look at the details, most of the stuff is already available on, on, on Unix systems. You just have to hook this together and make it easy, accessible for, for normal users like Alexandra. Yeah, we all are.
<laughs> you all are. Oh. What? Bloody German. <laughs> Bloody Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to your patch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I would say let's make this happen. Yes. <laughs> I have set up a guitar repository to do this. We have some uh, we have some wiki page already on cloud.org. There's nothing special on it besides this few ideas in this presentation. Um, but everybody who can, uh, was able to code in PHP or whatever technology you want to use on the server side, please um, please help. I think we have now uh, one more week here, not exactly a week, but yeah, a few, lot of days so we can discuss this. I want to do a both session, get some feedback from you. And um, with this, I think we have some solution where we can really share and manage uh, our data in a good way, better than now, and in a way that is a real competi uh, competition uh, to, to cloud solution. So, finally, the last slide of the talk, just a summary. I think if we combine the superior desktop technology we have in KDE for rich applications, combine this with cloud computing ideas like um, social features, <coughs> data and application sharing, and um, yeah, data, accessing data and accessing applications, so deployment, we have something which is really unique, which is more powerful than the cloud today and the standard desktops today. So, thanks. Questions? Um, first part of your talk talked about Attica, right, which is uh, a way for web providers to you know, hook up with desktop, you know, rich desktop clients, right? Yes. Um, in the second part, you talked about own cloud, which, you know, from the side, it seems like it's mostly geared towards, you know, my own files, you know, like stuff I have in my home directory. Yes. You know, synchronized. So this is about social interaction with other person, people, and others my documents. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, and it's a good idea. I like it. But um, at the beginning of the talk, you mentioned how we don't like how you know all my contacts are in Facebook. You know, yeah. and if I need information, I have to go there. And then, what if Facebook, you know, disappears one day? Yeah. So it seems like there needs to be a bridge between, you know, this this I, the idea of own cloud or own cloud sounds great, but if it can include other things besides just the files in my home directory, if it could include yeah. my contacts, my email. Um, but you can get them if you have Autocad. Well, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's possible. I mean, um, we will have a great free. Um, uh, PIM server in the future, I heard somewhere here in this room. Um, <laughs> till, um, so we have something like that. But for real, so, so, I mean, social means interaction of people. Yeah. And to interact, you have to find them. So there have to be some kind of share, common directory of people. Mm -hmm. So this is something we want to do with, with Artica. But not one, and that's the whole point, but several of them. Because of that, we have this concept of different providers. So we probably have different directories of people and merge them together on the client, not on the server. Okay. Will. Um, I, I'm really glad you mentioned the build service and everything and deployability. But I still think we need all over KDE's distributions to make services like that, app store type of services, more discoverable. Uh, more findable, so that um, whether whether people are uploading things through uh, through KD App Store or uh, yeah. your sites or to other uh, oh, other sites, yeah. So I think almost people think need this KD to work on it uh, and uh, get what you stuff for apps yeah. that, that can be familiar uh, app install interface, not just um, not, not not just a uh, K package kit. Low level things, something slightly higher. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you think you agree with me on that? Absolutely. Uh, 
it's also very important for the non-Linux on non-Linux uh, platforms, like for example Windows. We have pretty strong, as we will hear later on, pretty strong offering on Windows, and there is no package management, there is no versioning, there is no how do I get this stuff? So the key Windows people are doing this with an installer right now, which is I think the right idea. But we'll probably need something that goes the same is true for, for non-Linux mobile platforms. Um, so we, we have to kind of get that all into something that will work on all platforms. So that's yeah. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 I, I see um Ubuntu Ubuntu doing their app store at the moment. Yeah. That they're, they're doing the, um, their own app store at the moment, but this is just I mean the having an app store connected to their backend. And nothing else. You can't hook into the system. This is not open. Yeah. 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 The whole point is, of course, I want to have every single KDE application on KDE apps.org, of course, because I'm running it. But this would this is not the best solution in the future because we want to have different providers different sources of data and applications. So for example, Will, you could implement some um, uh, provider functionality into the build service directly also if you want. Of course, you don't have probably not all the data like the people, but we can connect this together. And other people can say, well, I have this repository for whatever special games for blah, 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 and just implement this and hook this also into the system and aggregate everything together. So this scales better than just a single, single, single app store like like Ubuntu or Apple. Yeah, I mean, but that's the, that's the implementation details. There are lots of ways to have different side layers that you access. Yeah. Other questions? No. Oh. Uh, do we handle translations of the desktop descriptions? And yeah, this is a good question. I think this is a really, really big un unresolved problem. Nobody, even not Facebook, with that much money, ha translates uh, user-generated content. And um, I think we can't do this. I was wondering if you have any thoughts on things like iOS. Do you know iOS? It's basically like a desktop in the cloud, so it runs on a server somewhere. Ah, okay. Desktop yeah. applications. Yes. Ah, of course. Yeah, of course, I know it. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts about uh, you know if those have a chance? I don't. I. I don't think this is a good idea. Maybe me personally, I don't. I don't get what get it. What's the, what's the point of this? I mean, you. If you can have local, powerful, rich applications, they're always better. I think this is some nice proof of concept that you can move Windows around inside your browser and everything. But it's. I, I don't. I don't get it. Okay, thank you.